Hello everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to deploy a NAS for free VM. And as you can see right here, NAS for free is an open source storage NAS, which is network attached storage, distribution based on FreeBSD. Uh, the long term goal with this tutorial is that I'm going to be doing or deploying a couple of Windows Server 2008 machines to do some failover clustering. Um, if that's not what you're intending on doing, but you want to see how NAS for free is deployed, uh, that's what I'll be doing in this video here. So I'm going to be deploying my NAS for free machine as a virtual machine on a ESX host. If you're going to be configuring this on a physical machine, the installation procedure is pretty much the same, um, other than you've got physical hardware instead of a virtual interface like this. And if you're going to be using VMware Workstation opposed to the vSphere client, uh, the concept is pretty much the same. So to get NASA free, you can download it from this website here. You'll just have to go to download and click on the version you want to use. Um, so now that you've, uh, or once you've got that downloaded, you can open up your vSphere or VMware Workstation. And uh, what we'll want to do is click new virtual machine and we will be calling it our NAS for free. Select the data store, I only have the one. Operating system is other and you can select free BSD from the drop down. I only have one NIC that I'm going to be using so I'm just leaving this the same. Uh, I'm going to set it with thick provisioning and with 8 gigabytes. And I've selected this because I'm actually going to increase the RAM um, once this configuration is completed here. So I'm going to give my VM 2 gigabytes of RAM. And once the VM's deployed, you can go to the CD DVD drive and select the ISO. If you're doing this in vSphere, you'll actually need to upload the ISO to the data store prior to this step. But that's pretty simple. Uh, you can just navigate through vSphere or click on the data store. And then you can use this button here to upload the files to the data store. So as you can see, I've already got the live CD that I'm going to be using. So we'll just go back here and as I was previously doing, select the ISO. If you're using VMware Workstation, this is quite a bit simpler. You can just select this right ahead in the uh, when you're deploying the VM, but what you want to do next is make sure you click on connect that power on and then click OK. And now we will power on the VM. Okay, so once the machine boots up, what you'll want to do next is install upgrade. So for that we'll do 9 and then just select option 1, select OK. Select the device, select OK and allow the installation to complete. Once the installation is completed, you'll want to go ahead and reboot the server. So 
So now that we're back at the main screen, as you can see, the option to uninstall slash upgrade is gone, so you know the installation is configured and completed. If you do not complete the installation and you go ahead to configure your NAS, anytime this NAS reboots, uh, you'll lose your configuration, so it's important to make sure that you've installed it. So prior to going to the web GUI, I am going to change the IP address here so I can actually access it. So to do that, you want to select option 2 and then go over to no for DHCP and then assign the IP address you want to give. Specify the default gateway and then DNS if you have it configured. No for IPv6. Okay, now you should be able to access the web GUI through this, or well, the address that you specify. It'll say right here on the main screen. Oops. And then the default user credentials are username admin, password is NAS for free, and then login. Once you're in, you can configure some general settings. I am going to be assigning a fully qualified domain name as I've already got that configured on my DNS server. And other than that, that should be all you need to do. So now that the NAS is up, I did not put any extra disks for the actual storage on the VM, so we will do that now. You can specify whatever you want, and then I would suggest doing thick provisioning and then selecting independent persistent and then you can add as many disks as you want I'm gonna do three storage disks and then one quorum for when I do my failover clustering And then we'll just allow those to get added to the VM. You can add these live to the VM. You should see actually at some point as the disks are being added, the prompt should drop on here and you should see some messages about the devices. From the web GUI, you'll want to go to Disks, Management, and then import disks. As you can see, here are my three storage disks that I'll be using for my NAS and the quorum for my cluster. Apply the changes. And now for doing the failover clustering, I'm going to be using iSCSI. So for the services, I'll drop down to iSCSI target, select enable, save and restart and now I'm going to go to portals add and then add again initiators add add again and back to targets and here's where you'll actually add in the disks so for I'm just gonna go with generic naming disk 1 select device and then I'll select the first device and then you'll have to repeat this for as many devices as you have and now we will add the targets 
for the iSCSI initiator to connect to on the cluster nodes. As you can see, it's already automatically selected the first available disk, so we will leave that alone. Select Add. And once again, you'll have to do this for each disk you have. And as far as NAS for free goes, that's it. So in my next video, I'll be deploying the two cluster... Well, I'll have be deploying the cluster failover feature on two Windows Server 2008 machines and initiating the iSCSI targets on those machines. As always, I hope this video was helpful for you and thanks for watching.